performance to virtual audiences. I took a little break for a couple months to put together a one-man show for Boston's Museum of Science that put together all the different stuff that I've been working on over the last six months. Please give it some love down in the description below. Go share it and watch it and give them some love for hosting a weirdo like me to do a real-time demonstration of Shakespeare using virtual streaming tools. It was very fun, very cool. And of course, I learned a lot and broke all of my workflows to be able to put it on. And I wanted to share some updates with you today. The number one question that I've been asked since launching the Future Stages is, right, but have you actually done a show using these tools yet? And now I can officially say, I've done two. Bam! The first one was the one-man show for the Museum of Science where I live demoed several different technologies using Shakespeare monologues. So there was a little bit of uh, Snapchat filters, using OBS to mix and mux on the fly and change scenes and cue my own show. There was some volumetric videos, some live motion capture, and then some avatar performance inside of the future stages. The second show I did was part of the Here Festival, which was an entirely immersive VR show done with both live action video of our actors and avatar performance. Now you may notice the future stages looks different than when you last showed it to us. It is, this is a black box iteration of the space that allows you to completely customize the chairs, the staging, the scenery, however you like, um, so that you can stage less traditional shows, not just kind of the pancake experience on a proscenium stage. If you want a link to that template, just reach out to me nicely on social media and I'll share it. How about that? Getting things for free already. So to recap, based off of an exhaustive amount of work I never thought I would do and the generosity of a lot of strangers on the internet, any actor like me can stand up your work for free to a virtual audience wherever they are in the world. It's a bit of a juggling game and it comes down to deciding three main factors. What do we see on stage? How does the audience experience the show? And how do we support the production technically from a Technically, technically. Oh no, it's, it's one of those days. It's gonna be one of those days. We're gonna get through it together. Neat. And what do we need to technically support the production backstage? So first and foremost, this is our stage these days. We are all performing virtually. We have to get over that fact and that hurdle. This is where we're at. So we need a piece of technology to serve as our stage. So I've been using OBS or Open Broadcaster software. There's also Streamlabs, there's EBS, there's Isadora. There's all kinds of other tools out there. Choose the one that works for you. But basically I need some type of software that's gonna allow me to mux together in real time the various elements and assets and sources that I need to be the cues of my show. Video, audio, visual effects, camera feeds, the whole thing. So in my case, OBS is my on stage. By using a service like Restream.io, I can live stream to multiple destinations, thus finding multiple audiences at the same time. We go to Restream.io, the basic account is free, and I can reach my audience natively wherever they consume content. So if you wanna join me on the 3D stages, that's awesome, that's where I want you. But for those who don't feel comfortable leaving a platform they already use, like YouTube or Facebook, I can simultaneously live stream to these other destinations. This allows me to scale and curate my audience experience wherever they already are, which is kind of the point of the internet, at least as far as I'm concerned. Now, I do wanna take a quick pause here to transparently volunteer my own politics about the economy of scale in live theater and entertainment. We are seeing Actors' Equity and IATSE and SAG-AFTRA all kind of fight nonsensically and honestly to the detriment of themselves and their members about who gets claim to what and who controls what at the end of the day we want people to work or at least I do and our focus should primarily be on how we can onboard and transition previous physicalized jobs into the virtual space. For my Boston show, I worked with a stage and lighting designer named Amir Cohen, who's used to virtually designing and mocking up his designs and then sending them off to be fabricated. Instead, we just figured out a way to integrate that 
into my OBS workflow and my green screen so that I was basically using his lighting cues as virtual elements. I absolutely welcome your thoughts and opinions about that in the comments down below. I am not a decision maker in any of my unions, but I don't personally see why we can't look to existing and previous language to find ways to scale and monetize people's work in these new spaces. For example, most theater contracts are based off of audience metrics or kind of anticipated house size. So if I live stream a performance and only 20 people watch it, cool, I guess that falls under the 99 seat contract. But if suddenly 4,000 people show up, I'm not gonna complain if you suddenly wanna elevate me to a worked contract. We have language that covers different sized venues or tiers, so why not figure out a way to scale that virtually even if just temporarily in this moment, so that then not only can people be paid, but they can start qualifying for their benefits like healthcare, which I'm pretty sure is kind of important right now. This would also be to the benefit of producers because they could take more risk on new projects. And if they failed, they'd only be paying for actual attendance. And if they don't want to risk paying more, cap ticket sales, and then you don't have to worry about it. But I'm sure people will respond negatively to these ideas because why get paid when you could just hate everything instead? But I just wanted to put that on the table as we move forward. Getting back to Restream.io, I've now opened up my ability to get more reliable video into Mozilla Hubs because I can push the feed anywhere. I had a great exchange with Robert Wong, who generously gave me some feedback about my design to help optimize the experience in the future stages. He recommended Mux.io as a reliable and compatible video streaming service, so I checked it out. It is completely free to start an account and to test five minute streams with their watermark. So I started there. And if you decide you like Mux, they'll give you a $20 credit whenever you add a payment method to your account. And then they have a variety of pricing plans from there. I've been experimenting with this for the last two months and I have not gone over my $20 freebie yet. So if it's any indication, it's a pretty cheap service. Cheap in the money sense, not in the quality. Anyway, yes, I'm spending some money now, but I'm getting more reliable video streaming, which ultimately is the important factor for performing live on the internet. Also, if I expect to be paid, I need to support and protect the compensation of others. Hence my rant a few minutes ago. Out of every single video player that I've used inside of Mozilla Hubs, Mux has been the most reliable, but I do still get some latency issues, which is just a fancy word for those lags and delays and playback that you see, especially due to the fact that I'm simul streaming and compositing multiple actors on the same computer. I'm just asking a lot of my machine. So let's lift up the hood and see what the problem is. I can use the virtual cam plugin from OBS to just screen share directly inside of Mozilla Hubs and get pretty good playback. But the real bottleneck is happening backstage with the dozens of browser windows and assets I'm downloading and muxing all that on the same computer that I'm also trying to live stream from. So the first and easiest step that I can take is to just kick it old school and plug the darn thing in. I can use an ethernet cable to connect directly to my internet rather than relying on my Wi-Fi, which just helps minimize that latency and the load that I'm putting on my Wi-Fi network because I cannot afford fancy Wi-Fi. Previously, I gave a tutorial on how to use baby monitor apps to actually put all my actors on the same cloud network and then pull down their individual video feeds as needed. But this is kind of clunky because it wasn't really intended for this purpose. I basically need my own video chat platform that allows me to interact with the individual videos. You know, easy. Fortunately, someone did. I was delighted to be DM'd by Chris from Shattered Spaces and Lorne from Technodramatist, who each brilliantly built their own platforms, technologies, apps, to be able to interact with their actors from anywhere in the world. This allowed them to have complete control over how they interacted with the audience, the actors, and all the elements that they needed for the production. Chris is a genius and gave me a crash course on how video codecs work and why mine were not. And Lorne, who is an equal visionary, was extremely generous to let me actually play with his proprietary body and facial tracking app, which definitely deserves its own video down the line if I can get his permission. But I don't wanna have to make my own thing. Isn't there something that just works out of the box and does all the things? Let's find out. Back in March, I began talking to Marcy at Evercast, who is helping Hollywood virtual productions with their own browser-based video conference that accepts 4K video, very low latency, and their own version of OBS called EBS that ports directly back into their video rooms. 
pretty nifty. The idea is that you could be on a call with an editor in one place, a VFX artist in another, and a director in a third, and they could all collaborate in real time while kind of seeing a showcased window of the result. Side note, if you're trying to do an online musical, I think Evercast is actually the closest I have found so far to completely removing that latency so that you can have reliable sync with musicians and singers. It is pretty darn good, but it does come with a price tag of $9.99 a month. That's $999 a month. Now, Marcy did say that anyone who mentioned my name would be considered for their promotional rate and early access of $199 a month, so can't hurt to try. DM me if you want an introduction. I'll be happy to set you up with Marcy. But Brendan, I don't have the monies. You know how much I love Scrappy Storytellers, and I want to find a free solution for you, so let's Keep digging. Culturehub.com is a global partnership between New York's La Mama, where I was in a production of Hamlet, and Korea's first contemporary performing arts school. They've released a fantastic tool called the Live Lab. So I just go to livelab.app, I set my camera source, audio source, I name my profile, and I create a room, and it's free. This is like any video conference where anyone can join if they have the room URL and they can add as many media sources as they want. So an actor could have those multiple video camera feeds we talked about and be composited individually in real time. Nifty. This is where it gets awesome because instead of being stuck in those Brady Bunch boxes, I can choose any video in the room, click open window, and now OBS will treat that window as its own video source, allowing me to stage multiple actors in multiple configurations. So imagine, my actors and designers all join the same live lab room. I pull their video feeds as needed into OBS to composite and then stream out to restream.io to host multiple audiences on multiple platforms, including using the Mux.io or just a webcam to stream directly into Mozilla hubs. Not bad. I had the absolute pleasure of sharing this workflow with the delightful Jessica Kubzanski, who is a fantastic director and the artistic director of Boston Court in Pasadena. She sat in on some early workshops of my VR theater and told me about another tool called Isadora. Disclaimer, I have only poked around Isadora for about 10 hours and the free version doesn't actually allow you to save, which is very smart on their part but it is a very robust piece of software that is originally intended for 3D projections. So imagine having the ability to pull any video source into your computer, just like you do on OBS, but having hundreds of built-in effects, animations, triggers, motion tracking, tons of goodies that I don't even know about yet, but, 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 it's meant for you to port out to a projector, not the internet. Okay, but what if this was our projector? Uh -huh. So to get around this, we're gonna use something similar to our virtual cam plugin from previous videos called NDI or Network Device Interface from Newtek. We simply download it from free from their website and now we can essentially tell the computer to treat Isadora like a camera source that we can broadcast on a video conference like Zoom or use OBS to live stream. These tools are constantly evolving and expanding, and I am trying my best to stay on top of it and present them to you as unbiasedly as possible in real time. For me at least, OBS seems to be the best and most reliable free tool to act as our on-stage experience. Then I use Restream, Virtual Cam, and NDI to give myself the options to bring the show to the audience wherever they are. And now I've presented five options for our backstage to incorporate multiple video elements and participants from baby monitors, building your own, Evercast, Live Lab, Isadora. And finally, we're gonna end on one that someone in the comments just told me about. His name's Penn, and he told me to check out something called obs.ninja, which I ultimately ended up using for our performance at the Here Festival. So let's check it out. So we go to obs.ninja, which is completely free and browser-based. You click on add your camera, set your video source, too many video sources. And your audio source. Click start. And you see this little URL up here that you can then send that URL to your stage manager or booth operator or drop it into your OBS as a browser or window capture. So now I can take this video on the fly 
and real quick and terrible filter out my green screen. Right, and I've composited myself live into OBS. And you'll see with the two of me right now, there's still some latency, but it's not bad, especially for a free tool. And as long as all your actors are inside of the same OBS Ninja system, their timing is still in sync with each other. So you're just streaming out to OBS on a slight delay. There's also a free app called Electron on GitHub with some instructions that allow you to take that URL from OBS Ninja and pop it right into OBS and also control the audio from inside OBS. So now we can bring in multiple actors, video feeds and audio from wherever they are using whatever device they want to join OBS Ninja from, composite them together and stream it back out. Not bad. So my on stage is OBS to be able to take all the elements put them together and stream them out to an audience experience, which can be either a YouTube live stream, a Facebook, a Zoom, or in the case of future stages, letting our OBS session via virtual camera become the webcam inside of the future stages, which has no latency, which is a perfect way to present 2D actors from webcams inside of the future stages. And then finally, OBS Ninja serves as our backstage where all the actors are congregating and setting up their audio and video sources so that we can pluck and pull them in whenever we need. OBS Ninja has two major factors going for it. One, it is free, which is fantastic. But two, whenever you create that URL of your own room, that URL does not change, that is yours. So as long as you keep going back to that URL, and activating your camera similarly from a similar height and distance, you could start compositing scenes in OBS that don't change. So you don't have to rebuild and recomposite the actors every single time. You kind of set it and forget it, which starts to allow you to really build reliable cues as long as everybody standardizes where and how they set up their camera and joins that URL every single time. Again, we are in very early days. You can buy your way out of a lot of these problems, but these are the free, quick and dirty solutions that I hope you will all check out and try and enjoy. I know that was a lot to take in. You can use the little time jumpers down below to be able to go back and revisit a section if you want to step through it more specifically with a little more time and leisure. But if you have any questions, please feel free to hit me up if you have any questions, concerns, ideas, things you've checked out that have worked. I would love to know more about that. You know the drill, like, subscribe, share, be kind to each other, and now go create something.